everyone, what's up? It's Dr. Charlie PT. Hope you are doing well. In this video, I want to share with you how you can use movement as medicine for your back, butt, or sciatic problem. So uh, you're probably searching YouTube, you've probably gone to maybe see a PT or someone else, and you're doing different stretches or exercises looking for relief, um, but you might not be doing them as systematically or scientifically as necessary to really get the best benefit or best bang for your buck, so to speak. So in this video, I wanna share with you how you can start to use these exercises as medicine to best relieve your pain. Real quick before we dive into that, if you're curious about the cause of your pain, maybe you're not sure if you have sciatica, or maybe you've been told you have piriformis syndrome, even though it's not very common. Uh, maybe you have a herniated disc, something like that. Be sure to check out my Better Than an MRI DIY Diagnostic Guide, where I share my entire diagnostic uh, decision-making framework for helping you figure out the most likely source of your pain. You can download it for free above. All right, so how do we use movement as medicine? So if you've watched any of my content or if you haven't, that's okay. Welcome to the channel. Um, I'm big about sharing principles and concepts versus just tactics. So uh, tactics are, hey, top three stretches for sciatica, uh, best exercise for piriformis syndrome. And at the end of the day, these things don't really exist. What's best for you might not be best for someone else and vice versa. So I want you to apply this concept of using movement as medicine or thinking of movement as medicine. So here's how you take an exercise, right, bottle it up, and again, get the best results from it. So first things first, right, if we think of using movement as medicine, then does it make sense to do a bunch of them at one time? It absolutely doesn't, right? So, you know, ideally, if you were sick, you wouldn't go to the pharmacy and they wouldn't hand you just a bag of random pills, right? Here's here's six different pills. Now, you could argue, well, you need one to counteract the effect of the other, and we're not gonna get too much into that. But, you know, the same thing can happen when using movement as medicine. So. At the end of the day, if you have sciatica, if you have piriformis syndrome, something like that, um, ideally we want to find uh, the one thing that's going to work best, right? Because if you're doing a sheet of things, it's possible, just like with the medication example, it's possible that uh, you could be doing one stretch that could be counteracting another stretch. And so the first concept that I challenge you to think about is instead of doing a sheet of exercises or going and getting you know, massage to the total body or adjustments all over the body, to the back, to the hip, to the SI joints, to different areas, right? Why not just pick one thing, right? Why not just pick one exercise that feels best, right? So again, if you start mixing this cocktail of medications together and if movement is medicine, right, then it's very possible you could become confused and have lack of clarity around what you're experiencing and the results that you're getting. You're not gonna know what's working or what's not working because you're throwing a bunch of things into a pot, stirring them together, right, and um, not being sure about the impact of each of those individual variables, okay? So again, concept, uh, is that you want to identify just one thing you can do and start with that. And ideally it should be safe, I call it a yummy motion. It should feel good, it should not increase your symptoms, all right? So you can cross a lot of things off from the traditional sciatica stretches and exercises list, such as figure four stretches, hamstring stretches, nerve glides. Most of the time these things aggravate the problem. If they're yucky, don't do them. Only yummy medications allowed, all right? We don't want you to have any adverse effects here, all right? The second thing is that, um, if you take out any pill bottle, right, from your uh, cabinet, you're going to see that there are a few elements, right, on each of the bottles. Uh, there is a, uh, there's a dose, so this is how much of the medication you take. There is a frequency, how often uh, you take the medication, and then there is the timing, right? And the timing being when do you take the medication, and maybe how do you take the medication? Do you take it with, do you take it with food? Do you take it with milk, right? Do you take it on an empty stomach? What's best for you, right? And so something to consider is that in order to get a therapeutic benefit, meaning the max bang for your buck or benefit from any given exercise, um, you have to optimize the prescription, right? And I think it makes sense. Think of it like this. You know, if, um, if somebody gave you a, uh, an anti-inflammatory, right, to try to reduce the inflammation in your back or your butt or your leg, let's just say that you do have inflammation, um, maybe they gave you a, a bottle of Advil or you bought it at the store, right? If you took out one of those Advils and you just licked it, right, you just licked one of the capsules, right, and you did that, um, would it work? You'd probably say, well, it's kind of crazy. Probably wouldn't work, right? Why wouldn't it work? You still took some of the medication, right? But you didn't take enough of a dose, you didn't do enough. Now, if you took the whole pill bottle, right? And then just threw it back, 
you probably wouldn't end up feeling too well, right? There would be an adverse reaction. You could potentially overdose, right? And so the same thing goes. If you are watching this and you have some type of back butter static problem, you're trying different treatments or exercises, um, you've got to optimize the prescription, right? You don't do enough of the one motion or the one thing, and guess what? You're not going to see any impact, and you're going to pass it off and say it doesn't work, right? You take a lick of the Advil, and you say Advil doesn't work. Is it that Advil doesn't work, or is it that you didn't have the optimal prescription? I'd say you didn't have the optimal prescription, right? Um, and so at the end of the day, we've got to find that sort of balance where we don't take too much, but we wanna do as much as needed, as little as necessary to get the, the benefit, all right? Uh, now, the difference is, is that on an Advil or other medications, these doses are, um, you know, somewhat uh, studied, if you will, right, and agreed upon as far as, hey, here's what uh, prescription strength uh, Advil, 800 milligrams or something like that might be from a dose standpoint, from a frequency standpoint. Here's the optimal prescription, but when it comes to movement, you're going to have to test it out. All right, and so you start with something that feels safe maybe, but um, remember you're gonna do one motion because if movement is medicine, you don't wanna do a whole bunch of different medicines at one time because they could counteract the effect. The second thing is you wanna optimize the dose, the frequency, and the timing. When I say dose, again, that's how much. So maybe you do uh, three 30 second holds or uh, three sets of 15 reps, something like that. Just pick a standard dose, something that feels comfortable and safe to you to begin with. The next thing, is frequency. How often do you do it, right? Uh, the challenge for a lot of traditional like exercise programs is that they might say, well, like do this sheet of exercises, 10 different things, um, maybe twice a day, right? Uh, but that's a lot of potentially wasted time. Uh, and it doesn't allow you to take um, a more frequent dose of that medication. Right, and so again, are you taking too much? Are you taking too little? And so what I'd say is start with, you know, two sets of something, three sets of something, whatever feels safe, and then play with how often you do it throughout the day. What would happen if you, instead of doing just one time a day, frequency of one, what would happen if you did it six times a day? Just that one exercise. Huh. Would that matter? Would it not matter? Well, if movement is medicine, you know that that thing makes you feel safe. What if you were to chunk that thing down into little tablets and swallow it frequently throughout the day? Interesting idea, right? And I'll give you an example here in a moment. Um, and then timing, right? This is a really savvy way to go about thinking of movement as medicine. So a lot of people get the dose, they get the frequency, but they don't think about the timing, right? When you take medicine matters. Think of it like this, right? If you knew that you were going to get a headache at 5 p.m. in the evening every single day, you know, would you take the pill at 5 a.m.? You wouldn't take the pill at 5 a.m. You'd take the pill at 4.45 p.m. or 5 p.m. when that started, right, to kind of curb it or treat it. And so the same goes when using movement as medicine. You find the one motion, you optimize the dose and the frequency, but when do you do it? Maybe what you do is if you have trouble getting out of bed in the morning, you identify something that you can do lying in bed, right? Again, if the, if the problem is here, right, you do it right beforehand. Um, you do it lying in bed. You do it sitting on the edge of bed such that you can get out of bed easier. Or maybe what you do is if symptoms are at the end of the day, uh, you don't do that right in the morning. You do it maybe you do it at two o'clock, at four o'clock, at six o'clock, at eight o'clock, right? And so you stack the medication, right? And you bias it towards the, the latter half of the day such you get, um, you know, a, a lot of uh, uh, influx of that medication, that movement, um, when it makes most sense. If you have pain when you lay down in bed at night, then you might do something right before you go to sleep. All right, so you, can you see that the timing of the medication, we think of movement as medicine, potentially matters. And I think it's just a perspective shift to think of movement as medicine because you start to take it like medicine, right? Again, if you have a headache at 5 p.m., you don't take the medicine at 5 a.m., all right? So make it make sense, all right? Just like you would take any other medication, all right? So play with the dose, frequency, and timing. Um, and let me give you an example. Let's just say that I actually was just working with a woman who said, hey, like walking something, it makes me feel really good. And I said, well, great. So well, how often are you walking? She's just like, you know, a couple times a week. I said, a couple times a week. I said, why not at least a couple times a day, <laughs> right? If movement is medicine and, you know, she's walking a couple times a week, then you could have likened that to her just licking the Advil. Hey, I know that if I lick this Advil, it helps a little bit, um, but I only lick it twice a week. Why not, why not lick it twice a minute? <laughs> 
right? And so the idea at the end of the day uh, is to, for her at least, and maybe for you, is to find something that works, one or two things, optimize the dose, frequency, and timing, and take it as medicine. So for her, instead of walking twice a week, right, and her symptoms, by the way, were worse in the morning, we had her um, do it three times a day. So she was walking three to four times a day instead of, you know, two, three times a week, right? And immediately her symptoms dropped uh, after quite a long time of experiencing back button sciatica problems, right? And the only difference was that she was still walking two to three times a week, but she completely switched up the prescription, right? She changed up the dose, the frequency, and the timing. So she was walking first thing in the morning versus later in the afternoon, for example, all right? And so that matters, right? It matters the, the prescription or the, the dose that you take of a medication. Again, too little, it doesn't work too much, and you sort of overdose, all right? So at the end of the day, that's that. Uh, and then again, going off this woman's uh, sort of story and something I think will be valuable for you is that uh, she's been walking now for just four days and she's noticed a significant reduction in pain. Four, four days of three times walking a day uh, for I think 10 minutes or so at a time. Um, and so we kind of optimize that prescription of walking in her case as medicine. Um, but then she shoots me a message this morning. She says, Dr. Charlie, what's next? I've been doing this for four days, right? In four days, I've seen a significant reduction in pain. What's next? And I didn't respond yet. So maybe she'll see this before I respond. But you know my answer to her and what it's gonna be? Nothing. Nothing is next. You keep taking the medication that's working for you, right? And think about it, it just makes sense. If you have like a rare disease, right? And you are taking a medication and it's curing that rare disease, meaning, you know, you, you've had this rare disease for months or for years, and then in a four day time frame, you notice that all your numbers are getting better, you're feeling uh, much, much improved. And then would you ever go to the doctor and say, hey, what do I do next? This medication is working amazing, what do I do next? You wouldn't, <laughs> right? Don't change the medication or the input that is getting you the result that you desire, all right? And so, we tend to be addicted to, especially when it comes to exercise and getting out of pain. I mean, pain is a fairly unpleasant thing, I think you would agree, right? And so what we tend to do is we tend to look for the quickest way out. And we often think the more we do, the better we'll feel, all right? But in my experience, as somebody who just treated thousands of people uh, with these issues, the more you do, the more confused you are, all right? The more bored you are, the better, meaning the less you do, the more clarity you have about the results that you're getting. All right, and so rather than trying to speed up the process and thinking that the more you do, the faster you'll get out of pain, recognize that that may be faulty logic. In fact, oftentimes the less you do, the more clarity you have and the more consistent the results uh, come. They just compound, compounding results, all right? And so her answer, hey, I've been doing this for four days. Maybe your answer, hey, I've been doing something that is working. What's next? There is nothing next. Next is what you've been doing. You're gonna take the same medication for another four days, and then we'll make a call, right? And so we wanna make a call based off of the data and not the emotion. The emotion is, well, oh, this is working. I'm really excited. What's next? I wanna get better faster. I'm almost there. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And the data says, hey, you're headed there. So why would you change course? Why would you want me to get rid of this medicine that's been helping so much? right? You wouldn't. All right. And so just something to think about. Okay. So to recap, right? You came here and you found this video because you're probably doing some exercises for back, butt or sciatica problems. All right. If you're not sure of the cause of your pain, check out my better than an MRI DIY diagnostic guide where I share for free my complete diagnostic algorithm. So you're not stuck in the diagnostic rabbit hole of trying to figure out what's causing your pain. Okay. Now principles first, tactics second. Tactics, the top three stretches for sciatica the best exercise for piriformis syndrome or hip bursitis or disc problems. What's best for you or what's best for someone else might not be best for you. And so you've got to understand that it's all a little bit individual. And so I don't share a lot of that content on my channel just because uh, I could easily make someone worse. All right. Now, the principle is that we want to use movement as medicine. All right. Just that shift in thinking of like, oh, wait, this movement, instead of seeing it as like, you know, a stick figure on a piece of paper, that's a pill. 
That's a pill, huh? And I'm ingesting that every time I do that. So does it feel safe? Does it feel yummy? Or does it make me feel like I wanna throw up? Does it increase my symptoms, right? So it's gotta feel safe. And would I wanna just take like eight different pills at once right off the bat? Probably not. I wouldn't know it's working, I wouldn't know it's not working. And I wouldn't be surprised if I had some weird reaction to it. So why would you do a sheet of exercises, right? Find the one thing that feels safest, movement as medicine, all right? Then we wanna optimize the movement prescription, the dose, the frequency, and timing. How much we do something, how often we do something, and the timing. Take that pill whenever it's most needed, all right? And there's gonna be some therapeutic um, sort of dose there where you're gonna get the most bang for your buck. You've gotta test things to find it out. You've gotta think like a scientist, all right? And then, Instead of asking what's next, right, so we take that medicine and then we get some feedback. Is it working? Is it not working? And if it's working, right, and you're asking yourself what's next, what's next is to continue doing what's working. Surprise, right? If it's not working, then guess what? That pill can go away and we can go back to the pharmacy. We can search for another movement to use as medicine. I found there's 118 different options for medicines or inputs, motions, right, to help resolve these problems. But recognize, look, resolving this goes well beyond motion, all right? We've got to identify what in your day-to-day -day life is contributing to the problem mentally and physically. We've got to learn to test things, and then we've got to start, yes, using movement as medicine. Right? One motion, systematically, at the right therapeutic dose, frequency, time, all of that, and what's next, look at the data, all right? If something's working, don't change it. If something uh, is not working, so you're sane, you're stuck, then we need to change it, right? Uh, and there's a process for testing to find what that is. And if something's worse and you're having an adverse reaction, get rid of it as quickly as possible, okay? So hopefully this was useful. Again, principles first, tactics second. Uh, apply this concept to any treatment, right, that you're trying right now, if you're trying to get out of this back butter sciatica um, problem, okay? So again, this is Dr. Charlie. Let me know your thoughts below in the comments. Thanks so much. Chat soon.